guy to look a bit more this way. Vivir en África, por ejemplo. Living in Africa, for example, I have traveled to 20 African countries, maybe more, I haven't counted them. I've traveled to Latin America, I've traveled to Australia, Europe. At one time I thought about starting to run safaris in Chile, for example, and we went there. Chile is a lovely country, but I miss the sound of the hyenas at night when we camped out. I miss the songs of the Maasai in nearby settlements. Andres Bifani is Chilean, although he has lived his entire life in Africa. He currently works as a photographer and television cameraman for various Western agencies and production companies who hire his services as a freelancer. He has covered several of the wars and catastrophes that have struck Africa in recent years, especially the war in the Sudan, the longest running armed conflict on the continent. Sudan was a funny or tragic story. I don't know which would be the best word. They called me to go and film a report on human rights in southern Sudan. We took off early in the morning, and it's a two, almost three hour flight. We started flying low, and you could see hamlets and villages, and it was strange. You couldn't see any people. It was deserted. Once we had landed, we walked some 20 minutes and arrived at the first village, which had been bombed the previous day. They had killed two seven, eight or nine-year-old girls. The people had left. There were some old people, some women. You could feel the tension, the fear, the distress. We stayed there a bit. You could see the craters from the Antonov bombs and continued walking. After half an hour or an hour, People began saying Antonov, Antonov, and I said, Antonov what? And after just a bit, bombs began to fall in the distance. Of course, I was afraid, but where do you hide? It's totally open, there's nowhere to go. I was with an English journalist, and she said, Antonov. And I said to her, yeah, what should we do? Where should we hide? And she said, no, you wait here and film. I took out the camera and began to film. I began as a photographer taking photos here. Then I went to an audiovisual school in Paris. And from there I returned here to Kenya. I work with advertising agencies doing television spots and press campaigns. I also have a modeling agency, African Model. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> Between wars, Andres works as a fashion photographer. He himself runs a modeling agency whose goal is to discover new African faces for the European catwalks. How do we look for new models? Well, that changes. If you see a pretty girl in a bar, you're going to tell her to stop by the agency. It depends on what the client asks for. Depending on that, we go out, we go to discos, to bars. There's no set rule. It's a little like a wild casting. I would say it, it's pretty difficult in Africa to model and uh, this is because uh, the jobs don't pay as well as overseas and uh, basically uh, models end up being used and exploited a lot and they, they get paid peanuts. We always insist that if they have another job, that they keep that job. If they're students, that they keep studying and not count on regular work as a model. In Africa, it is more like a, a side job. It is difficult to model in Africa because um, you have to have the correct body measurements, a flawless skin and a specific height and also to get the correct agency so that you, you get enough commercials to do to keep you. The market in Nairobi is small, it's tiny, it's completely saturated. A model who does a campaign for an alcoholic beverage isn't going to be able to do other campaigns, so she gets tired and leaves. That's why we're always looking for new models. Most models would like to go and work in Europe or the United States, outside Kenya. So it's very difficult to keep them here once they've done a big campaign. It's a good life, I think. In Nairobi, people live well. Nairobi isn't a very attractive city. The good thing about being here is that you can leave Nairobi often. Every weekend, go to national parks, to Masai Mara, Amboseli, Mount Kenya, or the Aberdares. A half hour from Nairobi and you're already out. For example, to the south, toward the Ngong Hills, you're already on the open plain, on the road to Masai Mara, for example, to see the migration of the news. When hunting was allowed in Kenya, everything was divided into different areas. A hunter had a concession, a hunting area. The landowners earned an income from the hunters. The government earned the money from the license to kill an elephant or a lion or a buffalo or whatever. But the good thing about it was that the hunters took care of their areas. They knew what animals they could and could not kill. They had quotas that they respected. When hunting was banned, these hunters were left without jobs. They began working as tour operators, doing photography safaris. And what happened then? All the landowners started setting up ranches with cattle, or wheat, or corn, or whatever. And they didn't want any more elephants, or buffalo, or baboons on their land. And they started pushing them onto their neighbor's land, or killing them. 